it's interesting that this drug is trying to actually target the disease itself. Do we know if there are any type, has there been any sort of things in the literature about uh, potential mechanisms of action for dementia with Lewy bodies outside of CT 1812? Is there anything specific that you can point to that, you know, this might be a promising target or, or outlet, I guess, per se? Well, unfortunately, there have been very few studies with dementia with Lewy body patients. Um, uh, at this meeting, we heard the result read out of one study, which was negative, unfortunately. Um, so there, there are, again, very few studies that are out there. Um, uh, there are a number of companies that are trying various mechanisms to see if we can target different areas of the brain or different receptor symptoms. We have to think differently than we would do for Alzheimer's disease. Um, and so um, I think the, the approach for cognition therapeutics with CT1812 gives us a very novel, innovative approach. Um, because we're addressing this oligomer aspect, um, it allows us to really attack two interesting aspects of dementia with Lewy bodies. So first, the alpha synuclein, which is the protein that forms Lewy bodies, makes an oligomer. Yeah. But also, about 80% of dementia with Lewy body patients have amyloid. Mm. So we can address not just the primary pathology of DLB, but 80% of the patients also yeah. have amyloid. So it potentially allows us to address the other significant pathology in the disease. So it really is a very, very exciting, mm -hmm. novel way to address a primary and a secondary pathology of the second most common cause of dementia. Can the advances of Alzheimer disease and the advances in therapeutics in Alzheimer disease also sort of propel the dementia with Lewy body space? Or do you feel as though that there are two entities in itself and that there isn't as much crossover as people may imagine? Well, every disease is different, and every disease presents its own unique challenges. However, I think we learn something from every study. So we, when a study is successful, we learn why that study was successful. When a study is not successful, we can learn so much from that. So while we learned a lot from Lacanumab's presentation of their successes. I think we learn just as, just as much, if not more, from a presentation like Gantanarimab's, so we can understand why maybe it didn't work. And that's going to really help the field in many ways almost as much as a successful study. Um, so being transparent, presenting the data, allowing investigators to see what the data is and understand why a trial maybe didn't work will help everybody across the field. Um, and so I think a meeting like CTAD, where investigators and companies and academics all come together and share data, is just so critical to advance the field. Because without working together, there just won't be progress. Science is not done in a vacuum, right? <laughs> academics are not going to solve the problem. Industry is not going to solve the problem. We're going to solve the problem working together.